folks, good evening and welcome to Phantoms and Monsters Personal Reports, uh, where I narrate some of the recent and past uh, cryptid and unexplained sightings encounters submitted to Phantoms and Monsters. I will also detail current and past investigations, so thanks for joining me. Uh, the Phantoms and Monsters radio channel is made possible by you clicking the subscribe button and by you sharing our programming. Um, and, and please feel free to leave comments as well. Uh, the super chat and the super thanks donations are always appreciated. And the buy me a coffee link and banner are always shown. So um, thanks for your consideration. So for tonight, uh, the first story is, is kind of unusual. You know, I, I had no, known anything about this. This kind of got sprung on me. Then when I went back in my archive, I, I did find a mention of it. So um, what it is, uh, a reptilian encounter resulting in the death of coal miners near Dixonville, Pennsylvania, was declassified in 2008. Uh, and there were other deadly reptilian incidents reported in Pennsylvania mines. So in a 2008 file was declassified by British Ministry of Defense. It was titled Unidentified Flying Objects Correspondence. And the report contained detailed information regarding ufology. Now, inside the 318-page document in a, a lengthy chapter that was labeled, the mystery of iniquity exposed the reality of serpent race and the subterranean origin of UFOs. And there were a few interesting encounters described in pretty decent detail. But the one documented ordeal that interested me took place in the coal mining town of Dixonville, Pennsylvania, in Indiana County. Now, in the early 1940s, two mining inspectors received a frantic call about a collapsed shaft. They rushed to the accident site where 15 coal miners were now help, helplessly trapped. And according to the document, hostile subterranean, quote, lizard people were encountered. Now, the first responders noticed a lifeless, lifeless body laying on scattered debris. Uh, his skin was lacerated with claw-like marks from an unknown creature. Then more corpse, uh, corpses soon surfaced. The deceased miners had identical gruesome injuries. All had succumbed to these horrific wounds. Despite scouring the deep tunnels, several miners were still missing. And additional personnel joined the search party in hopes of retrieving survivors. Uh, the emergency workers searched the sprawling tunnel system, yet not yet no additional miners were, re un were uncovered. Despite the waning hope of finding other living miners, two inspectors to continued their quest, and they eventually found a mysterious package passage to a huge cavern. And at one point, one of the inspectors observed one of the creatures. He said uh, he saw an, an enormous scaled reptilian running away he stated that thing was not of this world and the incident remained classified for nearly 40 years on july 14 1974 a local newspaper published an article about a subterranean massacre stranger still numerous eyewitnesses have experienced similar confrontations for decades Another incident occurred in a mine in Mercer County, Pennsylvania. Of the three victims of that particular mine disaster, only two were rescued. However, both described a similar paranormal encounter with strange men who entered the caverns and gave light to the two trapped miners and told them that they would be rescued. They were uncertain whether the entities were human or supernatural beings, however, as much of their collective hallucination contained both physical as well as supernatural elements. The bluish light, which eliminated the rune, they said, was real, but other holographic-like visuals 
appeared on the walls then touched by hand their hands either disappeared or revealed rock solid behind or solid rocks behind now michael burke in his article green thing sparks rumors in the valley news dispatch which is new kensington Territum and and vandergriff pennsylvania uh, in, in March 5th, 18, 1981, described a small creature about four foot tall that appeared to be half humanoid, half dinosaur, was seen emerging from a sewer tunnel in New Kensington. A group of children chased the infant or young dinosaur-like creature, one of them momentarily grabbing at, at, grabbing at, at which point it let out a squealing or screeching sound and then slip from his hands and escape back into the sewer tunnel. Now, the um, the Dixonville incident was later reported in 1944 in the local newspaper. And this was the Stony Breakfield News Extra, which was, uh, it was originally posted in 1944, but reposted in 1974. And in that article, and it was a small article, it put, m mentioned that mine inspector Glenn E. Berger reported in 1944 to his superiors that the Dixonville mine disaster, which killed 15 men, was not the result of a cave-in, but rather an attack by underground creatures capable of manipulating the earth, partial cave-ins, whose domain the miners had apparently penetrated. Most of the dead miners were not injured by falling rock, but showed signs of large claw marks. Others were missing, and one survivor spoke of seeing a vicious humanoid creature that was not of this world within an ancient passage that the miners had broken into. The creature somehow created a cave-in, blocking himself and the other ins another inspector, who closed his eyes when he felt the creature's hot breath on his neck. Uh, he uh, blocked himself in the main entrance until another rescue party began to dig through the collapse, scaring the creature away. So, you know, I don't know what to make of this thing. Um, it, it's pretty bizarre. You know, it's not the first time I've gotten reptilian creatures in, in caves or tunnels or, you know, underground. But to happen in Pennsylvania, I think is pretty interesting. Uh, but, you know, apparently there's been at least two of these sightings over time, and I'm quite sure there are other ones. So, like I said, if you guys have questions, please feel free to post after each uh, reading, or you can wait until after the end of the, end of the uh, presentation, and I will go through everything with you. <sighs> okay, so the next the next account, there was a video <laughs> that came out, uh, and it showed this supposed creature from a, um, a CCTV camera that the locals were calling La Mona or some type of ghoul in, in Costa Rica, and Vincent has the video and has some drawings of it. Um, these these monas or what they call are also described as angry women who transform in order to go in search of men who abandon them that that's the legend now those people who have watched the video had debated whether or not the bizarre figure in the video was actually a human mimicking a cryptid legend but i don't know what to think of it um we do also have a um uh a drawing submitted by Jose Sanchez. Uh, I think he's in the chat tonight. So uh, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting video, and uh, there it is, right there. And there's there's the drawing. So, uh, but you know, that's not the only type of sighting like this we had. Uh, we actually had one in Maine. Uh, you know, I received another account after I posted this and it, where this being that had stood upright, it was a featureless human-like being. 
and uh, but it did s started walking in a crab like fashion. Uh, this was up near Bar Harbor, Maine, which is actually a, an island off the coast of Maine. Uh, the person who forwarded me said my story, which is actually someone else's story. K and S were a couple in college, the College of the Atlantic, if you want to look it up. This was pre-cell phone time. Anyway, they were going to party in the woods. I live near, near I live in Bell, Bar Harbor, Maine, which is on Mount Desert Island. This is a thing we do up here. Maybe you guys do it too. People just pick a place and in the middle of nowhere, build a giant bonfire, drink smoke, party till the wee hours in the summertime. Now, K and S were trying to uh, find the turnoff and they, they had driven up and down the road multiple times, finding nothing, no turnoff. And as they crested the top of the hill, the full moon broke above the tree line and illuminated the road in front of them. They were taking one final pass on the stretch of road when they saw something come out of the trees ahead of them. And it was a human shape, but it was crab walking upside down across the road. Kay, who told me the story, said it was like darting like an actual crab. It was, it was pale. And when it got to the middle of the road, it got down closer to the road, then stretched out and broke upwards. It stood in front of them for a second. It had yellow eyes and just a body. It didn't have any sort of genitalia or anything. It, it was just sort of a human body. And then it ran the rest of the way across the road. They turned around and drove home, home. When she told me this story, I had chills that creeped me out so hardcore that, and then I had to drive home from work on the same night later on. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the heck they saw. <laughs> Was it a crow or humanoid that, you know, sometimes we get some pretty weird descriptions of these things, the way they move, you know, and that's why they call them crawlers. But uh, I don't know if, um, I don't know if that's related or not. So in the next account, now this is pretty interesting. As a West Virginia man recounts his encounter with a goat man entity while driving on US 33 as it passes through George Washington National Forest in Rockingham County, Virginia. Now, I will tell you one thing before I read this. George Washington National Forest, um, the Appalachian Trail runs through there. <clears throat> it is well known for a lot of Bigfoot sightings and a lot of not deer sightings and a lot of other weird stuff. So I'm just letting you know before I go into this. Um, <clears throat> the witness states, I have encountered Bigfoot. Heck, probably the nest of them based upon how many we heard around us that night. Maybe even something else was with them or screwing with them and used us as a distracting scent. But the encounter that I'd like to speak about here is something that is not a Bigfoot. But to be honest, I have no idea what it was. To give you a point of reference, it occurred on what might be called a major road, U.S. Route 33, as it passes through George Washington National Forest in Rockingham County, Virginia, heading towards Pendleton County, West Virginia. Now, I was coming from, from work at the time. It was about 11 in the evening, and uh, the road was dark, and it was, I was alone on the road. To the right of me, the road was nothing but forest that runs back up the mountain with um, occasional breaks where creeks come down. To the left of me was a river that ran along the road for a good part of the drive. Now and then, a cut dirt road, or the most part, opened onto the main road where people or hunters had basically created the side road. The night was sort of bright in addition to the light my headlights cast on the side of the road. Now, my windows were up and my doors were locked. My driver's window was slightly cracked. This is because this became important a bit further down. I had just crossed over one of the small creeks when I heard, when I thought I saw something, something shadow appear next to my passenger side window. Sort of smoky looking at first. Then something slapped my door and started smacking the door handle. 
At the same time, the smoky image solidified and became a goat-like image that was running next to my car. It was running on two legs. It had red eyes and was grabbing the door handle as if it was trying to open the door. The whole time keeping pace with me as I sped up to tr try to get away from it. I, I saw it was goat-like because it was more thin than heavy, sort of brownish color, but can't be positive due to the light. No muzzle like a wolf or dog, more of a flattish face. It had smallish horns, but could have had its ears jutting forward. The strange thing, though, was as I looked and, and trying to keep my eyes on the road at the same time, it also appeared to sort of fade in and out. Like it was there, then gone only to reform. Sure, left scratch, sure left scratches on my door, though. No immediate sounds while I was next to while I was next to the car, but once it stopped chasing me, there were some howls behind me. Ironically, though, it only chased me from one creek to another. It stopped just before the road started to climb up the mountain. Now, there's been a few unusual acts in that area that resulted in deaths. It's a really lonely stretch of road to be driven at night. Uh, since it's National Forest, no one lives in the immediate area. It's been more than 10 years since that happened now. I no longer drive that stretch of road. I heard that howl a few more times after that night going through there, but that never, you know, it was never like what happened before. I drove it for a number of years after that and never heard it again. And I still don't know what it was or if anyone else in my family had ever encountered it. You know, I just don't normally talk about it. And uh, added later, I had been informed by immediate family member members that they too have heard, felt, and encountered something along that stretch of road. And like I said before, it's well known for Bigfoot activity. Now, is it a spirit or something? I don't know. Um, you know, these goat man encounters are pretty interesting. A lot of times they seem like they're supernatural. They, they don't necessarily take a form all the time. They have the red eyes a lot of times. So it was one of these beings. I, I have no idea. But um, it's pretty interesting. And um, I did check up on the road itself. And I did find the area where I think this occurred at or the general area. And there, there have been several fatal crashes in that area since the, the road was built. And I think it was the boat, the road was rerouted. The, the road was rerouted in, in the fifties. So apparently uh, there have been some things going on. I was related to what he encountered. I had no idea, but it's interesting to think of. Uh, and Vincent says that goat man seems to be supernatural. Yeah. I mean, you know, you hear about these goat men, that guard these bridges and you know are near bridges and people see them along the roadways and they all do seem to be supernatural at some in some degree um but i thought that was pretty interesting um and we don't have anything else on that okay well i'll just go ahead and read the next one now this next one is something i recently received uh, a bucks county Pennsylvania witness described his encounter with a six foot tall upright cryptid near his home. The area is well known for canine cryptids from previous reports. And I have received several reports from there. Dolestown, Pennsylvania has, has had a, a couple of these canine reports. And quite frankly, in Pennsylvania, especially this year, and I mentioned it on spaced out radio last day. And I think I've mentioned it a year before we've had, we've been pretty busy with, um, cryptic canines this this summer we're we're working and looking into four cases in particular uh bernadette and tommy have one out their way in somerset county but then we got some other ones we picked up since then so um yeah so it's been pretty busy so uh the witness wrote to me line back in 2020 I moved to Doylestown, Pennsylvania to be near my son and grandchildren. I found a small cabin-like apartment in Bucks County. I lived near farms and woods. I signed the lease on August 6th. On the evening of August 7th, 2020, my son and I came to the apartment to move some stuff in. 
we were both standing at the rear of the truck on the driveway when we both turned around, not because we heard something, but we just happened to do so. We noticed a black, odd-looking creature creeping at the end of the driveway, trying to go past us in the direction of the farm across the cabin. It quickly turned around and was going fast. We both agreed that it didn't look like a dog or a coyote. We finished unloading that evening, and I was constantly asking him what he thought the creature was. He said he didn't know, but it was weird looking. I wrote it down because that's what I've always done. So seven months later, on March 1st, 2001, it was a cold and windy early morning. I had put the trash out hours before and was working on the computer. I heard a loud bang, and right away I knew my trash it was my trash can. So I put my Jackson shoes on and grabbed my flashlight. It was a little after 3 a.m. in the morning. The reason I grabbed my flashlight is because it's very dark out front and there's wildlife in the area because of the woods and farmland. When walking on my driveway to the road, you can't see it all unless it's a full moon. Now, as I got down to my trash can and started pulling the can up from the ground, I heard a car horn blowing and the sound of someone slamming their brakes. As I look towards the stop sign, I see this black figure in the light of the car, standing in the middle of the road. It dropped on all fours and starts heading in my direction. I noticed the guy standing in the road. Within seconds, the creature had reached my driveway. It noticed my flashlight and stood up on two legs, boxing its front paws and growling. It sounded like a snore. It had yellow eyes and stood about six foot. It had black spiked hair and had drool dripping from its mouth. Suddenly, the car peels wheels and made a left turn towards my driveway. The creature dropped on all fours and was gone in a blink. The car stopped in front of my driveway and the guy yelled out, what, what the F was that? He then proceeded down my road. I was walking backwards, shaking nervously towards my front door. I got inside to find myself still upset and shaking my head. I stood at the door with the outside light on and waited for the car to return. After a few minutes, the car blew by my driveway and proceeded the original way he was heading when he encountered the creature. This creature looked like something on steroids from a horror movie. I know what I saw, Lon. I don't drink or do drugs. I take care of my wife who suffered a massive heart attack and has dementia. I haven't seen this creature since then. When I sit outside at night now, I'm packed with two guns. I researched this and found nothing, but I continue looking in case something pops up. I hope I never see this creature again. I still think about when I go outside at night to sit and relax. If you have any stories like mine, I'm interested in knowing about it. You may find this sounding crazy, but my background is that I work for the police and fire department at uh, Baltimore County Sparrows Point Police, high tech security, body, private bodyguard bank security, uh, the Baltimore Blast soccer security and Pinkerton security. So I contacted this guy and, um, yeah, he sounded absolutely believable. I think he encountered something. Um, so uh, his credentials were good because he he actually lived down where I near where I used to live at. And uh, Eric, I got Eric Mintel involved. Eric talked to him, and uh, he's following up on it because he lives in he's in Bucks County, and he's been doing a lot of these upright canine sightings and, and reports and such. In fact, he's been out to Bray Road twice within the past year. So, um, yeah, he's looking into it. Uh, you know, I, I do believe he, he may have actually seen an upright canine and, um, you know, I, I, I did discuss it in a little more detail with the witness and we did follow up and, uh, I don't know, you know, we had another, uh, upright wolf encounter also in Dolestown. And we had a red, red-eyed, hairless canine like cryptid in Dulles down within the past three years. Butch looked into one of them actually. So I don't know what's going on out there, but um, this is in Bucks County, in Dole, and it's not far from the Delaware River. Actually, uh, it's it's a very historic area, and um, but it's got it, it's it's 
the residential area has a lot of woods and stuff around it. So um, people are seeing stuff and encountering things. So um, it's an interesting report. So uh, anybody got anything to say about that? Okay, well, like I said, you know, if you've got questions, feel free to ask me at the end of, end of my presentation. So this next one kind of received some interest from people. And I did mention it on the show, but I'm going to I'm going to mention it here. Uh, you know, where a Houston, Texas man relates a strange encounter that I that he had with a Bigfoot at Buffalo Bayou in 1997. And quite frankly, this is probably one of the more unusual Bigfoot encounters I, that's ever been told to me. I uh, I received an interesting phone call from a 68 year old. Houston, Texas man, who I'll call RC, says that he encountered a Bigfoot in Buffalo Bayou in 19, 9, 1979 while he was looking for driving directions. I have heard of a few interesting Bigfoot encounters at Buffalo Bayou previously, but this is by far the strangest. Now, for those who don't know Houston, Buffalo Bayou is a... Um, it's a, it's more like a river, but it, it does, you know, it, it's more in people that are familiar with bayous, swamp bayous and such, it, it does regulate and change in depth up and down. And that's kind of what it is. I mean, when, when the water levels does wane up and down and I have been told that many times people that will go out there will see the, that the the water level has gotten so low that there are stranded fish out there, mostly gar or carp. And I had had one person tell me that they, they literally saw a Bigfoot walking out there in the muck grabbing fish. So they have people have seen them out there. So RC states that he was with his new at his new girlfriend's place until four o'clock a.m. one morning. Apparently, he didn't know the area that well since he had just moved to Houston. Somehow, he got lost and ended up in the Buffalo Bayou area. He uh, pulled off the road, hoping that he could find someone to give him directions. He knew that he needed to get back on Allen Parkway in order to drive home. And now, Allen Parkway is the main highway that runs parallel to the bayou. As he sat in his car, he noticed someone walking to his left near the water. So he got out of his car and called out to the individual. This person stopped and looked over their shoulder. As R.C. walked closer, he figured that this person was a transient. But he did realize, even though there was very little available light, that this person was quite tall and big. So R.C. got within 10 foot or so from the individual who stood still and watched R.C. approach. R.C. then realized that something was not right, that the hair on this person was very long and extended down to the chest, and that the rest of the body was completely covered in hair. R.C. immediately told the person, never mind, then quickly turned and ran to his car. R.C. got back into the car, hoping that this person had not followed or chased him, he quickly glanced back and saw that this individual was still standing in the same spot looking at him. R.C. started his car and, and drove off. As he was driving, he was trying to figure out what he had encountered. Now, at that time, he never thought much about Bigfoot, let alone seeing one in the city of Houston. The next day, he called his brother, who told R.C. that he may have actually had a Bigfoot encounter. Apparently, his brother was aware of other sightings in the Buffalo Bayou area. Now, several years ago, I had talked to another Houston man who had been gar fishing in Buffalo Bayou. It was late afternoon, and he was along the shore. As he sat there, he heard something approach him from behind. He looked and was stunned to see a six-foot-tall dark brown Bigfoot standing about 30 foot behind him. The man slowly stood up and faced the Bigfoot. This was not the first time that he had seen a similar creature at the bayou. The Bigfoot stood still, but continued to look at him. After several seconds, the fisherman removed one of his gar on his stringer and placed it on the ground. 
<clears throat> he gathered his gear, walked away. As he glanced back, he saw the Bigfoot pick up the fish and run downstream toward the trees. So apparently, this is not unusual in the area. <clears throat> and like I said, I have heard other reports from there. So uh, who knows? And, and, qu and quite frankly, people who live in the area, if you heard of anything, please feel free to contact me because I'm, I'm interested in getting more reports from there and seeing what, you know, you know, trying to get some more information about what people are encountering there in Houston. Now, this, uh, this last encounter... Uh, where a group of friends decided to go camping near Magolan Rim in Arizona. Uh, later that night, after hiking to the rim, they encountered a roaring Bigfoot that is throwing rocks and branches at them. Now, for those familiar with uh, the Magolan creature, Magolan monster, and apparently, and it's been going on for a long time, there's this Bigfoot. And it, people say it's the same one. I don't know if it is or not, but in Magolan in the Rim is supposedly where this is seen at. So this is what was sent to me. This incident occurred when I went to school in Arizona. A group of my friends wanted to take me out exploring. I'm born and raised in the Bay Area, California, city life, in other words. I have never been camping. I mean, the one time I saw snow was on the mountaintops about 50 miles from my house. The, anyway, we were here. We are six of us heading on the Magolan Rim from Tempe, Arizona. We had left Tempe at 5 a.m. It wasn't a day trip. These guys had packed tents, food, water, and everything you can think of for an excursion. I bought my 45 with enough ammo for just in case situation. So about five hours after we arrive, I'm in awe. The smells of fresh air and views of mountains were amazing. Two of my buddies were setting up camp. I decided to look at our surroundings. One of the guys told me not to wander off too far. I agreed. I had my 45 and just walked through the woods. I must have walked about a good half hour. I saw a few critters, but nothing to write home about. I got to a stream. I sat on this rock and was about to feel the water when in the corner of my eye, something flashed. I saw a black flash. Like something was there, but when I looked up, it was gone. No noise. I was like, hmm, I better get back. So I must be tired from the drive up. I got back to the camp and relaxed for a few minutes. At about midnight, we all decided to go to the rim. We grabbed canteens and took off. One of the guys mentioned something about the Magolan Beast. Here we go, I thought. Then another guy asked, what's that? The guy said it's a Bigfoot type creature. We laughed. I said, Well, I'm protected. One guy said that my 45 wasn't strong enough to stop it. I said, Well, if he uh, was charging, I'd make him stop. It'll make him stop. We all laughed and continued our trek. So, about three hours later, we arrive and everyone is tired from the hike, including myself. I needed to relieve myself, so I found some trees to handle my business. A pebble about two inches around hit my knee my first thought was these guys were playing with me i laughed it off I, I zip up and walk back to the group i picked up a few pebbles on the way to the group and started pegging the guys you want to play games i said they all looked at me confused i said why i said why i was you know out relieving myself someone threw a pebble at my leg they were all about 50 foot from me for them to reach me they would have had to really chuck it. But the pebble that hit me wasn't thrown hard. And no one else was near me. Everyone was at the rim. My second thought was, okay, what happened? So I suggested we go back to camp because I was getting hungry. That's when all hell broke loose. As soon as everyone got up, a roar came from the forest to the right. It was a lion roar like from a zoo. It was one of those guttural deep T-Rex roars from Jurassic Park. I pulled my 45 and began walking a bit faster. A rock measuring about the size of a basketball flew a foot away from my buddy's head and four or five branches about six foot long and about two inches thick were thrown at us from behind a bluff. It, all the guys were, started running. I was behind, but I let off five rounds and took off running. We got to camp, started packing our stuff up. 
they asked me what I was shooting at. I, I said it was in the air to scare anything off. They must have packed the whole camp in 15 minutes. As we were piling into the Jeep, I looked back, and standing in the forest line was an eight-foot-tall black-colored Bigfoot. It just stood there, watching the guys pow into the Jeep like scared ants. I stood by the back door watching the beast. It just stood there. Half of my brain wanted to shoot. The other half wanted to talk to it. I felt as if I was in a trance. I was just fixated on it. I was about 30 foot away from it. I saw as if it, I had just... I saw it as if I, I was, it was just it and I. My friends were yelling, but I heard faint muffling in the background. I remember wanting to say something like, hey, like, hey, I'm sorry for shooting and scaring you. My trance was broken when one of my friends grabbed me and pushed me into the Jeep. I heard him say, there is the Bigfoot. Let's go. I looked back out of the rear window and it was gone. Now, this was in 1992. I, I never went back to the Magolan Rim. I uh, never went into the woods. Even now in my late 40s, I know what I saw. And it, was, it was a man, a tall, hairy man with gentle eyes. So uh, I, I just wonder if it, this was the Magolan beast they actually encountered. Maybe it was a couple of them. It seemed like the, these things were being thrown in all directions. Maybe it was a group of them. Uh, so this is the last encounter I have tonight. So if you guys have any folks have any questions, please feel free to ask me right now. Uh, put it in in caps and uh, I'll answer it the best way I can. Okay, let's see here. Where's the highest concentration of dogman sightings in Pennsylvania? Mostly in central Pennsylvania. I'd say the counties that have had more encounters are Clearfield, Blair, Cambria, Center County in particular, uh, around those areas. Now, the sightings we've had this year, we had the one in Somerset. But most of the other ones have been in the eastern eastern part of the state. Uh, Dolphin County, well, that was that was an older setting, but in uh, in Berks County and in uh, Bucks County. So uh, yeah, we're getting these sightings in in all parts of the state. So uh, and 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 Stan Gordon has mentioned to me he has had a few sightings as well. So uh, yeah. M. Swords asked, uh, do you get a lot of reports of Beast of Bray Road in Elkhorn, Wisconsin? I don't get their sightings from there. Um, you know, I think it's it's been going on so long out in that area that people just don't report it that much. They just kind of feel it. They, it's part of what they their, their culture. Uh, you know, I had Lee Hempel on who owns the property there, and he talks about it all the time. He's had encounters. And he continues to have encounters. And it's a lot of supernatural aspects to it as well. So I, I suggest you go back into my archive and and uh, listen to the uh, the uh, interview we have with Lee Hempful just a couple of months ago. Uh, David Jones Locker, Lon, have you ever had an angelic encounter? Absolutely. I use, I use angels in my spirit rescue work. I mean, people may hear that from me and think, what is Lon talking about? But no, I, I, I heavily believe in guardian angels, and I, I believe angels are put with us to help us. It's not a religious thing. It's just a faith thing. It's, you know, I, uh, but I, I have sensed them. I have seen them with my, my uh, intuitive abilities and, um, I, I have used them and uh, I have helped others see them and encounter them as well. Uh, and I do ask people to um, try to communicate with their guardian angels. It's something that I be deeply believe in. Uh, let's see, 24 baby bull, any cryptic sightings, Delaware Water Gap area, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, oh yeah, uh, Delaware Water Gap area does have some Bigfoot sightings, uh, there have been a few up there, 
as well as, you know, in New Jersey, Southwest New Jersey has had Bigfoot encounters. Uh, I've had some, I've had some haunting cases up there, but uh, yeah, there's Bigfoot in, there's Bigfoot in New Jersey. Absolute Northeast, Pen Northeast Pennsylvania as well. Um, but Delaware Water Gap is, is a somewhat hot area. There's a lot of weird things going on up there. Uh, so, yep. If you go to my web, if you go to my blog and and uh, search the, the search tool and put Delaware uh, Water Gap, it, some of them may come up. Have you heard of any other Arizona settings? Oh yeah, Arizona is pretty busy. Um, you know when when J C Johnson was still alive, he did a lot of his investigations throughout Arizona, northern Arizona, in the uh, to the Nay Navajo Reservation, even into the Apache areas. But um, the Chuska Mountains is a real active area. A lot of Bigfoot activity. A lot of weird stuff, too. You know, David Weatherly had been with JC a couple times when they had gone up there. And he has a couple of stories. But, yeah, Bigfoot's pretty prevalent up there. Also some big cats, too. Uh, Black Rabbit, hey, Lon, do you anticipate any new information ever coming in light regarding the coming to light and regarding Todd C's? I hope it is. You know, it, it's been very few and far between. Uh, I don't know if any of the family members are ever going to come forward with anything else. You know, Butch had some contacts with some, some um, people, some police officers who had been part of that case, but they had not gotten back to him, and I, I really don't have any contact information. So, you know, if something does come up, I'll I'll be I'll jump on it and I'll look into it. But I just have not heard a whole lot. I really haven't. Do you know of any encounters near Kanawha County, West Virginia? Absolutely. There have been winged humanoid sightings up there. Um up and down the Kanawha River as well. Um, I've got a couple of those listed on the blog. If you put Kanawha, Kanawha County or Kanawha into the search engine, they'll come up. Uh, you know, that whole Mason County and Ka Kanawha County areas have still got Mothman wing humanoid encounters to this day. Uh, it didn't stop back in the 60s. Uh, it still happens. And uh, I had some dogman sightings in Kanawha County as well. So, uh, yep, there's a lot of stuff that goes on up in that area. Uh, Karen Peterson, what are your thoughts on the increase of upright canine settings? Well, you know, I met, I talked to Dave, um, Dave Scott about this on Spaced Out Radio the other night. Uh, I think more recently people are going out in the woods as compared to where they were during the lockdown. And I think these things are, are coming out more. Now we have been getting a lot of the, um, the uh, hyena like looking beings, you know, the colorings and the slope backs and such quadrupeds and uprights. So, um, why it's happening i don't know i mean i think more people are, are willing to look around and see things i've always thought that cryptids that are seen allow people certain people to see them for some reason but uh yeah i don't know why but there have been a lot of sightings uh, especially here in pennsylvania like i said before it's been pretty busy and we're trying to follow through with all this um but uh, yeah, it's uh, it has gotten it has gotten a little busy, and hopefully we're going to get some answers. But this one case in Berks County is really interesting. Uh, Lon, this is from Lori Barnes. Do you believe Bigfoot have anything to do with angels or cherubs? I don't think so. I, I don't know. I haven't found any evidence of that being connected. Sorry. Um, Sharth Harton, thanks for being a new member. David Jones Locker, from anything from the Eckerd investigative follow up affected you? Yeah, I mean, I've been ever since I've been working with David, and I, I was warned that this was going to happen. I did, 
I did have some encounters with these beings. Um, and um, I, I described it in the book. It was it wasn't reptilians. These were um, these were tall greys, and they had come to my my residence and actually had been abducted at least one time that I know of. But yeah, I mean, it, and it was a result of David's in, encounters and, and me investigating it and, and putting it out there. So uh, yeah, yeah. And David's still busy on it, so. Okay, folks. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. I appreciate you coming in and listening to this. Uh, if you have an unexplained encounter or sighting, feel free to contact me through the Fams and Monsters blog site. And thanks to each and all of you for watching and chatting. Uh, it's truly appreciated. Your support is what makes this possible. So please like, subscribe, and share. And please comment. Uh, I love getting comments. Please feel free to comment on it. Uh, if you have a sighting or encounter report that you would like to be considered for personal reports or post on the Fams and Monster blog site, feel free to forward to my email at lawnstrickler at phantomsandmonsters.com. So this coming Friday night, we will be joined by psychic, clairvoyant, medical intuitive, and E.T. Bigfoot contactee, Sue Walker. She's got quite a story, and uh, she's written about it extensively. She also is an artist and has drawn uh, her interpretations of what she's encountered. So it should be a very interesting show. So, um, so until then, stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.